Recently, there's been a slew of public figures that have came out and openly acknowledged that the realities of evil exist, but not just in an abstract sense, but in a way that is pervasive across culture. In this video, we're gonna be looking at Dr. Phil going from one extreme to another extreme on this polarizing topic, how that ties into the recent controversy with Sean Evans from Hot Ones, and a surprising scriptural tie-in from the Cat Williams and Joe Rogan podcast. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you're new here or if you're not new here, please make sure you've hit that subscribe button with the bell notification on a huge percentage who watch are not subscribed. Now, let's jump into this video. Check out Dr. Phil's disposition in this viral moment from just seven years ago regarding a transformer and his dad's reaction upon seeing them for the first time. This poor father, Thank you for being man. here. I appreciate Gosh. it. Tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now, Gary. I'm hurt bad. Oh, my God. Really bad. What do you what do you have to say? Why? I just I just want you to know that you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. As a father, that was gut wrenching to watch. It felt like torture, to be honest with you. But check out later on in the same exact video where Dr. Phil goes to mediate this situation seemingly not picking sides until this happens. This has got to be overwhelming for you. I mean, it really does. All I'm asking is, are you willing to educate yourself and say, is it possible there are some things I don't know which would make some of this where this person that I love, which is still sitting here, Looks a little different in the moment. The spirit that I love, the soul that I love, the laughters that we shared, the experiences that we shared, those moments, those memories that we shared, still all here embodied. It, this person is just experiencing something that was not asked for. It's just a reality that is coming to pass. Given that that's a possibility, I'm, I might want to educate myself about it to see if like, you know, oh my God, you know, maybe I'm need to catch up a little on something. I mean, I'm just saying, is it just a possibility? Yes. Did you notice the language? Is it possible that you aren't properly educated about what's happening in this reality? Sounds like he took a side. Sounds like Dr. Phil took a very, very, very specific side. But listen to how his tone changed in recent conversations he's been having. It's as if he got completely red-pilled or something. I mean, let's be commonsensical. Let's look at the facts. Let's look at science. Let's not look at what you want to be the truth. Let's look at what mm. is the facts. Let's look at what mm. is science. It's interesting mm. they choose words like gender affirming care. You know, that's that's interesting that they call it that. But really what they're talking about is hormonal therapy or sex reassignment surgery on children. The American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Endocrine Society or whatever the exact name of that is, all of the major medical associations have signed off on this, Joe. And I have never seen those organizations sign off on anything with less information as to whether or not it does long-term harm of anything in mm. my life. And when I, when I ask about that, when I bring that up, then they immediately label you as transphobic. I thought that the deal was first do no harm. All of the European countries, you know, Sweden, Norway, they, they've all stopped doing it because they say, we, we cannot say in good conscience that this does no harm because it does harm. And their reason for doing it is it stops this drive for, it doesn't fix that. It doesn't fix all the comorbid issues that come along with feeling like they're in the wrong body, but yet they're pushing this. And I think people are going to be shocked that these medical organizations have signed off on this. I think they've just given in to the pressure. 
So it's interesting hearing Dr. Phil talk about these organizations and the institutions giving in to the pressure. But is that seemingly what he did on that first clip we looked at, that he kind of gave into the pressure maybe of the emerging progressive zeitgeist at the time or to the pressure of his producers or to the pressure of being empathetic? And just a few years later, he's done a complete 180 on this exact topic. So it seems like Dr. Phil, like a lot of us, have woken up to the evil that's going on in an industry, which is for profit, by the way, and how it's invaded many of our medical institutions, which most of us who went through the pandemic see that these institutions aren't always right. And speaking of evil institutions and evil ways to make money, let me tell you about this recent story of Sean Evans from Hot Ones breaking up with a corn star. So just 24 hours after this several month relationship went public, Sean broke up with this adult corn star actress. Now, this is after he publicly took her to the Super Bowl and came out about the relationship on Valentine's Day. He then ends it. So what's going on here? Well, let's hear her side of it and what she thinks happened on TMZ. Yeah, we definitely talked about what I did before. I mean, I was always concerned with like, his image and how it would affect him and he said it was okay so it's all good but i guess like if he knew about it you guys talked about it and all that yeah i don't how come he decided to break up with you then well i think you know maybe you feel like you can fly under the radar or like it's going to be okay but i think when the heat really comes down to it it was a lot so yeah so here melissa the corn star who was dating sean admits the reason why he broke up with her was because of the pressure of dating a corn star now society sexual revolution, what have you believe that none of these things matter. It doesn't matter what your biological wiring is in terms of the body that you are given by God. It doesn't matter what you do with that body because, hey, you're just a highly evolved animal acting on its impulsive desire for pleasure. These things don't matter how many partners you've had, what you do for work, how you use your body. They don't matter. It's all outside of the religious patriarchy and institutions trying to suppress you. Well, it seems like people are waking up to that. It seems like we've went to the logical conclusions of that in these different areas and discovered that it does matter. It does matter how fathers view their sons that don't believe their sons anymore. It does matter how people who are designed to experience the beauties of intimacy within a one-man, one-woman marriage, doing that outside and for profit affects relationships, affects families, affects communities. Now, in a moment, I'm going to show you guys a passage of scripture that glues this entire idea together. But first, listen to the exchange that Cat Williams had with Joe Rogan regarding this exact same theme. When, when you think about what, what people have always believed, that's why mm -hmm. angels and devils freak me out. Because no one wants to believe that there's a Satan, that there's a devil. But people have always said there is. You mean a bad and a good? Yeah, not just a bad and a good, but an actual evil, malevolent force. No, just start with bad okay, and good. Yes, bad okay, and good, so yeah. if we started bad and good, then we understand what must be at the extremes of that. Mm. Right? Nobody's telling a different okay. story. So Cat Williams just simply points out, if you start at the bad and the good, and you let the logical extremes play out of that, you arrive at good and evil. Listen to what else Cat Williams said later on in the interview that ties into this topic. And then we're going to go to a Bible verse here. You either believe in the natural and the supernatural or you don't. Mm -hmm. And there are facets to everything. So if you don't believe in anything supernatural, then I would assume that means you don't believe in God either. So check out what the Apostle Paul writes towards the end of his book to the church in Ephesus. In verse 10, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you could take your stand against the devil's schemes. And then here it is. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. And then he goes on to describe what the armor of God is. You should really go and read the rest of that chapter. So when we're looking at the issue with the Transformers or the LGTV community or the body positivity or the sex positivity movement, we're not dealing with 
people. We're dealing with spiritual forces. We're dealing with the logical conclusions of what Cat Williams pointed out, which there is a good and a bad. And if you take that to its extremes, you have an evil, and then you have the transcendent. You have God. And so as we're navigating this world, our job isn't to just be afraid and scary and spooked out by all the crazy stuff that's happening. Yes, that's happening. We see it. It's obvious. It's becoming more obvious. But it's interesting that it's becoming more obvious to public figures that are for the first time starting to acknowledge that, well, things aren't as they seem. And there seems to be something beneath the surface driving some of this. And our job in all of that is to put on the armor of God, to walk in the ways of God, to live out God's purpose for our life instead of being afraid because ultimately we know that Jesus wins. So I want to know what you guys think about this. Do you think that there's going to be more people that are coming to these same conclusions? Are you seeing this pattern in your own relationships, in your real life, like I am with some of my friends that are acknowledging these things for the first time? Comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you want to see my full analysis of the Count Williams and Joe Rogan conversation, we'll have that pinned up over here for you. All right. Appreciate you. I'll see you later. Peace.